Hello everyone, my name is Matt Scorpion and this is trying not to break your fucking Xbox because for some reason that was what was causing all of the frame breaks, all the frames desyncs, all the sound glitches, for some reason just resetting my Xbox reset my capture so now it is actually working. So that being said, welcome to week two of the Witch Queen with a reset. Now a few things right off the bat, there is an active Vanguard booster so if you wish to grind the Vanguard ranks and actually hit um the pursuit weapon rank it up fully to get an ascendant shard get that exotic on rank two or just whatever you want to it is boosted vanguard ranks now as well they did actually keep their word and did include the little icon to say that it is boosted vanguard rank. well not oh, nope they're right there boosted vanguard rank as well as the acute burns which reworked uh the benefits of incoming versus outgoing damage so there's those things and then as well for the nightfall it is the arms dealer and for the nightfall weapon it is your first chance to get your hands on the brand new reissued silicon neuroma which is around a kinetic aggressive frame sniper so if you wish to have a new aggressive kinetic it's now around but it is the only weapon it is not a one old one new like bungie said the nightfall was going to be i'm just gonna hope that's a bug but no one has said otherwise but going throughout the rest of the core playlist nothing new for gambit and crucible we have mayhem this ties into one of our weekly challenges more on that later but Legends, we have for Vault of Glass, it is Templar Challenge as well as Discipline Focused Armor for Master Mode. So if you wish to get Grenade Focused Armor or a Time Lost Fate Bringer, those are both up for grabs in Vault of Glass. But I know this is not the raid that anyone's really thinking of outside from the just free Powerfuls it gives you if you're still grinding the Powerfuls tree. But outside of that, there is some things that have rotated around it. Checking Eternity for our Master Mode. I forget what this is supposed to be. Uh, Fallen Hive and Zydron for our set rounds on Master Mode. If those are, if people are still hunting the rock or they just want a easy uh, option to grind out Master Mode or just looking to get that pinnacle done. There you go. Master Mode is probably one of the harder first rounds, but an easier second round. But moving throughout the world, let's see. I'm going to stop visiting Europa um, just because there is no longer any powerfuls really here that's available outside of Deepstone Crypt. I will still check the challenge in case people want loot from here. But aside from that, it is just the same things as usual as before. So sadly, I will not be checking Europa much anymore. Now, for Crypt, though, it is the core four. So basically, just four ball strat it. For Tanix, you'll get an extra drop extra chance at a helmet maybe a new another heavy weapon to add to your powerful gear now throughout the world with the season there is of course another thing to visit saladin about just to continue the season into week two and as well there is a new operation elbrus on the cosmodrone it, i'm sure you need progress for that and there is also supposedly a new cutscene that i've been seeing around although cutscenes could be leaked uh from multiple weeks in. I remember seeing the Saint cutscene very soon, not even after Saint was introduced to the LXD and Saint for uh, Season of the Splicer. But, talking about the season as well, going into challenges, we have Operation Elbrus Week 2, which is basically just complete the weekly assignment and defeat combatants in the PsyOps Battlegrounds. Tug of War for killing two different bosses from the Wellspring. Can't tell if those are both around, but I do know the Light Flayer is the current final boss for the Wellspring. Weapon Shape 1, basically just craft a weapon with the weapon crafting system. Really easy one to do there. Then Run of the Worms, an easy one to do, it just takes some time. Basically complete the Parasite Exotic Quest, which if you don't know, you get this quest immediately after finishing the Witch Queen campaign. So, if you haven't finished the campaign wondering where it is, you have to kill Savathun first. And back home again, basically compete and complete in various activities in the Cosmodrone, Bounties, Patrols, Public Events, and Lost Sectors, as well as Lost Legend, which is basically just do one of the uh, daily Lost Sectors that's available. Depending on what day you do it, it will rotate various places. I can't say what it will be tomorrow, but I do can't say what it is today, but I won't check just because it will be something tomorrow, which is probably when people are going to see this. And on that same note, Calibrate Close Range Weapon, I will say this specifically, in the Cosmodrone, you must use sidearms, submachine guns, shotguns, glaives, and swords in the Cosmodrone to progress this challenge. So, don't use it in the Tangled Shore, that's like you can't, it's not here anymore, but use it in the Cosmodrone. Bank Kill Repeat, the Gambit Challenge, basically bank motes, defeat blockers, and defeat guardians, which, depending on how actually terrible Gambit is nowadays, I haven't played it, but I heard shit, we'll have to see. 
Flourish of Power, defeating Guardians of the Mayhem playlist with super abilities. Even if you're just doing the weekly pinnacle, this one is possible to do. It depends what you actually do with your support. And score pest control. I will recommend that people do the parasite quest because this as gives you access to the one guaranteed strike where scorn will appear, at least that I can think of right now with the absence of the hollow lair. And that is birthplace of the vile that you can access from the strikes menu and possibly randomly from the Vanguard playlist. So if you want to progress that, you got some options for it. But going throughout the world, I won't check Ada until her thing is actually fixed just because everything is still rating at a 48 power stat. And I'm not sure if the stat distribution is exactly the same off of all the armor, but it is to be seen on that note. Then, with Banshee stock, we have some options. The Scathe Law Kinetic Auto Rifle, Under Pressure Osmosis, various options for both PvE and PvP, if you so wish to go for it. Patient, this one is a very good PvP god roll, in my opinion. The Suros Intrinsic, giving it better handling and reduced flinch on every lo reload. Vorp Weapon to help you with damaging super act or active supers, I should say. Steady Hands for handling buffs after you kill anything that goes to all weapons, so it's pretty easy to swap to as backup. Then Armor Piercers or Ricochet Rounds. Now, I know Ricochet is probably the god roll just because it buffs stability and that does over penetrate, but that the range buff applies to both of these. Then Extended Barrel that reduces recoil as well as increasing range, slowly reduces handling, but you know how Soros works. They benefit their own handling. Then Annual Skate, this one could be good for PvE, Outlaw for the reload, Wellspring for the ability energy, Appendage Bag for Mag Size, Flutter Madwell for reload. You know, you got options here, folks. And Fugue 55, a generally good sniper, but not one I'd recommend for purely snapshot, just because PvP-wise, but, you know, snipers are pretty weird nowadays. And Memory Interdict, a grenade launcher that could be good for some void builds, but it's hard to say if it really applies there well. Wellspring's good for ability energy auto-loading, just because it always keeps it loaded, as well as high explosive ordnance for bigger booms with every grenade. Now... Typhon, this one might be a little bit weird and glitched just because one for all is a good perk, but at the same time, you need to hit three different things. You need to get lucky with one grenade or better, or spend three to get the perk active. But Genesis is a weird one because I'm pretty sure I've only seen one thing shielded by Stasis Energy, and that was the heroic public event boss from uh, the, what's it called? I don't know, but it's hard to say. It's a uh, one public event boss from the throne world, so... Who's, who's to say whether or not it would actually be the case? Now, if you'll excuse me, this has been attempt number four getting this to work. I think it's finally actually stuck, and that being said, I have a few things to go over. First being Eververse, the second being uh, the season, and the third being the location of the next Lucent mods. Because those are acting a lot like the penguins in that there is a new set of Lucent mods to find with every season. We just gotta go out and find them ourselves, or ask for some help doing that, which I am willing to provide. That being said, my name is Ben Scorpion, and I will see you in the next video. Hopefully my Xbox doesn't corrupt my capture again. We win and we learn, we dream and we die. We stop and concern, no chances keep on passing us by.